This is the new Viltrox 28 millimeter F 1.8 for Sony E-mounts. I took it last week with me to New York as I wanted to kind of test it out to see if it could be somewhat of a Leica Q3 replacement. There obviously are a lot of things, the size of this camera, the sensor is uh, incredibly similar in terms of megapixels and 28 at 1.7 is what the Q3 has. This is 28 at 1.8. So how did this lens fair. Let's check it out. Now, Viltrox did send me this for the sake of this review, but they're not paying me. But if you are interested in checking out the presets that I use to edit all these photos, you can check them out in the description down below. And if you're interested in ordering this lens, you can do so via the links down below as well, as those will give me a small little commission. But it all adds up. So there are a few different options here for the Sony E-mount, but there aren't a lot of 28 millimeter options out there. Obviously, Leica is known to have their 28 millimeter Sumicrons, Sumiluxes, the Elmerits, and then obviously it's become more and more popular through the Leica Q series. The main other lens that you might be considering purchasing would be the original 28 F2 from Sony. It's just a super old lens, one of their first lenses, so it's not great. It's not terrible, for sure. I've definitely used worse lenses out there, but um, it's definitely not nearly up to the par of most of Sony's new G and GM lenses. And then I'm actually filming the top-down shot with it as well, but the new 24 millimeter F2.8, while uh, you know a stop plus slower than this one and wider at 24 millimeters, the size and weight definitely works into this kind of style. So ultimately there just aren't a lot of options in this kind of like 28 millimeter, small compact class of camera and lens combination. This is the A7CR. I purchased this uh, right after I got done with my review copy of it, basically because I'd been on the wait list for a Q3 for a long time and kind of just started thinking, all right, if this can do most of what the Q3 can do at a significantly lower price point, and I can't even get my hands on a Q3, let's see if this could be something that could replace a Q3, at least in my own uh, personal workflow. Now I'm gonna be doing a deeper dive into this camera in particular after especially using it not only over the summer before it was released, but then after getting it in my hands and using it almost every day for the past couple of weeks. But today we're specifically gonna talk about this Viltrox 28 millimeter and to see if it's a good value even at that $379 price tag. So on the A7CR, it doesn't balance really, really well. Obviously on a larger body, it's going to balance totally fine. I just got this grip in today. Uh, it's a small rig grip that just allows you to get a little bit more under your cameras. Uh, I have their grips for my A7R5 and my A7 IV as well. Just that little extra bit there makes it a lot easier. And then I just love not having to put a tripod plate on this if I ever want to you know, use this thing on a tripod for some reason. And you can see right here, if I do like my Leica balance test, which is obviously this isn't a Leica, but it can stay up. But obviously without the grip, it's going to uh, sit a little bit more flush. But overall, it's not that big. Obviously it'd be nicer if it was a little bit smaller, but it's a little bit wider and definitely a little bit longer than the Sony 28 F2. So if you're looking to get like the smallest lens possible, this is definitely not going to be the smallest, but uh, again, I carry it around for a few weeks and then specifically all day, every day for the couple days I was in New York last week and didn't really have any issues with it at all, especially considering how small this whole setup is. Now, as far as ergonomics go, there is one metallic focusing ring here. Um, and then the focusing is kind of a long throw. So it's, it's really easy to get really precise focus on this, which is nice. But one of the things that is just like befuddling, confounding to me is the fact that for this lens, uh, I don't, are they trying to think this is only going to be a video lens? Because this has a really nice aperture ring but it's not clicked and there's no way to change it from being clicked or unclicked. And even moving from F16 to like A or automatic, it's not even that big of like a detent or anything here. So it's just one of those things where it's like, it feels like a giant oversight. I would almost rather not have a um, aperture ring on here than have one that is stuck not being able to be clicked. 
Now in comparing it specifically to the 28 millimeter F2 from Sony, again, this is like a, a super old lens and not anything that's super current, but I found that the 28 millimeter from Sony is actually a little bit wider than this. It's probably not a huge deal in between what this is and the, the two of them. But if you look at these uh, test shots that I did on a tripod in the exact same spot, you can definitely tell that the Viltrox is a little bit tighter than this Sony 28s. But enough about the lens and how it feels. Let's check out some image samples and I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. So overall, I think this is a really great lens. It's a great lens for personal stuff. It fits on this camera in particular really well. So if you have a, you know, A7C, A7C2, A7R, or you just wanna try out the 28 millimeter focal length and it's not gonna be something that is like your mainstay. This is like one of your main professional lenses. I think it's great. Do I think it's on par with even some of the Sony G lenses? Eh, not so much. It actually performed fairly similar to the original 28F2. I do feel like it has a little bit more character and having even that just slight distance between the F1.8 and the F2 on this does add a little bit more pop. You get a little bit more out of focus elements. Is it a massive difference? No, not necessarily. And both of them perform fairly similar in most regards. So yeah, it's definitely something that obviously I wouldn't have kept it on this camera for the vast majority of the time that I've had this. If I didn't think it was a good lens, is it gonna be something that actually resolves all the way up to 60 megapixels or whatever uh, at 1.8? Probably not, but especially stopping down to something like 5.6 and pairing basically any lens that has any decent autofocusing system with a Sony camera is gonna give you amazing autofocus, great tracking. And so if you are looking to pick up something that in some ways is going to be better than a Leica Q3, in some ways is going to be inferior to a Leica Q3, this is a pretty good setup and for the significant cost savings that you are going to be saving by picking up a kit like this over something like a Leica Q3, there's definitely a lot of things you could do with it. I could even have paid for that trip to New York uh, just to make some images with the difference that it would cost me between buying a Q3 and picking up this whole setup. So thanks so much for watching. If you wanna check out my video on the A7CR, you can do it right here. You can check out some of my videos on the Leica Q2 monochrome up here, and I will see you in one of those videos. Bye.